Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me and for having me here. It's a very big pleasure to attend this workshop. And in fact, I will talk about distance conjectures and uh, I will also see, or I will try to explain how this is related to the question of uh, dark matter and in particular uh, primordial black holes as dark matter candidates. The work is together with uh, Luis Ancodocchi and uh, Ignatius Antoniadis from June, but I will also fill in more references during my talk. So I guess you all have seen this picture. That's the cosmic pie showing that uh, we need to explain the uh, dark energy component in the universe and uh, also uh, the missing dark matter, which is not seen by direct observations. So there are these two puzzles. And even more, there's a question, let me see, uh, about the smallness of the cosmological constant, which is uh, in Planck units of the order of 10 to minus 122. And uh, then there's this other number that has to be explained, namely the dark matter density, which is per cubic uh, uh, meter, roughly 10 to minus 27, 27 kilogram, or per megaparsec about 10 to minus eight uh, solar masses. And uh, of course the question, could there be even any relation between these uh, two numbers? Uh, so, now oh, that's a full screen problem. So, slideshow is not good because it goes on automatically. Okay, so, um, uh, can you fix this, uh, Fernando? I don't like this because slideshow is going through the slides one out. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Good, for uh, several years, um, people thought that a uh, good explanation is uh, for the cosmological constant is a statistical anthropic explanation by the string landscape and this might be, of course, uh, is still the case. Uh, for dark matter, there are many scenarios like cold, hot uh, dark matter, WIMPs, actions. And uh, of course, it was also suggested only some time ago that the uh, black holes could serve as good uh, dark matter particles. But it was also pointed out that it's very hard to accommodate 100% of the dark matter that is needed by uh, black holes. So here we want to discuss a possible link between um, the cosmological constant and primordial black holes as dark, uh, as dark matter candidates via uh, a new kind of uh, cosmic coincidence. And um, as I will explain, this could be due to the existence of uh, large dimensions in string theory. Large dimensions in string theory have occurred already in the past, in particular to explain the standard model hierarchy, hierarchy problem, namely to explain uh, the TV scale of the standard model. But here there is a shift in the sense that uh, now uh, large dimensions will be used. Uh, and this is a framework of the dark dimension uh, in order to explain the cosmological hierarchy problem. And uh, this is basically the proposal by Montero Waffa and uh, Irene Valenzuela uh, made uh, in May this year. Okay, the outline of my talk then is uh, I will first uh, discuss uh, in general some aspects of some distance conjectures. Then I will briefly introduce the cosmological constant distance conjecture, namely the dark universe. And uh, then we will come to the question of primordial black holes and uh, also in relation with the dark universe. So we have heard already about the swamp and distance conjecture. So I do not uh, explain it or introduce it again. It's simply uh, in the nutshell, uh, it's saying that uh, at large distances, delta in the parameter space of string vacua, there must be an infinite tower of states uh, whose uh, mass is scaling in the following way. Uh, namely, it's uh, suppressed exponentially uh, in terms of the distance in field space with some parameter alpha, which was also discussed particularly in Tom's uh, talk. So obviously when the distance, and we go into far large field distances in the moduli space or field space, uh, the mass scale of the tower is much smaller than the Planck scale. But I also like to remind you about uh, the uh, 
for me, which is the essential cutoff scale in the theory, it is not the tower mass scale, little m, but uh, it is a scale where uh, quantum gravity or gravity becomes strongly coupled. And uh, this is uh, the so-called species scale. So the species scale uh, is given in terms of the Planck mass uh, divided by the number of uh, particles n squared of n, which determines the species. And um, this, uh, in general, uh, can be much uh, different from the tower mass scale m. So uh, um, I think the following picture uh, should be uh, make sense. So here, uh, in the context of the distance conjecture, we have the tower mass scale little m. Uh, somewhere much above there is the Planck mass, but uh, in between there is a cutoff scale, uh, lambda quantum gravity. And uh, these uh, three scales are typically separated from each other. So uh, typically there's a hierarchy of scales the following way that M is uh, much smaller than the scale lambda QG, which in itself is smaller or much smaller than the Planck mass in the limit where the distance in field space becomes large. So I think this is important also for applications that the uh, cutoff uh, of the EFT is not given by this uh, little scale M, but it's given by the quantum gravity scale lambda QG. And in fact, I think it makes even sense to call this scale little M the infrared scale uh, and the UV scale is then given by the species scale. And uh, this was also discussed in some interesting paper by the Madrid group that there can be very nice effects of so-called UV IR mixing between lambda QG and, uh, and the tower mass scale little m. So now I want to introduce some, some of the distance conjectures. Uh, and in fact, uh, I will discuss those distance conjectures which are not directly related to the uh, mod-like parameter, but uh, they are related to some uh, quantities, right, some uh, uh, different quantities. And the first one is the anti desitter conjecture is saying that in the limit of a small cosmological constant, or a small absolute value of the cosmological constant, there has to be a tower, uh, uh, which scales in the following way. And the uh, fall off parameter alpha here was uh, argued to be uh, bigger than one half. This is a so called anti desitter uh, distance conjecture because uh, it, uh, there's big uh, or nice evidence for it in particular for negative uh, cosmological constant for anti desitter spaces. Uh, then we also discussed, and also the Madrid group discussed the so called Gravitino conjecture, where now the tower is determined by the Gravitino mass in case of a uh, broken supersymmetry, again with some particular parameter beta, which has to be bigger than zero. And uh, also, I like to mention the so called a black hole entropy distance conjecture, uh, which we introduced and discussed with this group of people. And it says again, for black hole solutions in gravity and quantum gravity, there should be also an associated tower, which becomes light in the limit where the entropy of the black hole uh, becomes uh, large. So not like uh, for the CC conjecture or the Gravitino conjecture in the limit of small uh, quantity, but in this case for large entropy. All these uh, uh, three distance conjectures are uh, both closely related to each other. For example, the gravitino mass and the cosmological constant in supergravity, they obey this uh, relation. And therefore, you can see that in particular cases, in fact, where supersymmetry is unbroken, where dw, the derivative of the superpotential is zero, then the anti desitter conjecture and the gravitino conjecture are, in fact, equivalent to each other. But uh, there's also a very nice correspondence between flux vacua and string theory which are relevant here, and, uh, and uh, black hole solutions, uh, namely that there's a so-called black hole flux domain wall correspondence. Uh, you can see it also formally that the entropy of certain black holes is given in terms of the central charge by this relation. And if you compare these two equations, they also look very similar. And therefore, there's also a relation between the ADS distance projector and the black hole connector. And uh, we will uh, explain this in more detail in the upcoming paper, which hopefully appears soon. Um, the emerging string conjecture was also uh, mentioned already uh, today, and it's uh, saying that the tower of states, I think for all possible distance conjectures, which we are looking at, 
uh, can be either given by the light string excitations or per Kaluza Klein or dual winding modes. And today I will uh, basically focus on the first uh, option, namely on the uh, where the tower is given by the Kaluza Klein modes. So uh, in this case, uh, it's a cake. A mass scale, a new dimension is opening up. So if you go to large field distances, uh, there's a decompactification limit. And uh, for example, a compact circle of radius R is opening up in the relevant tower uh, are the KK particles with masses one over R, where the distance is given by the logarithm of the radius. So for KK modes uh, related to N extra dimensions, one can now easily, one can count the KK modes up to the species scale. And then you get this formula for the species scale. It's given by the lowest uh, KK excitation by the KK mass scale M, this particular power times the appropriate unit of the Planck mass. And uh, again, as you can see, normally there's a big separation between M and lambda QG uh, uh, due to this formula. And in fact, if you look even more closely to this relation, you can see that uh, lambda QG in this case is nothing else in the higher dimensional Planck mass. All right. So uh, now let me come to the uh, to the uh, scenario of the dark universe, uh, which I call the CC distance conjecture. And uh, we want to consider um, the zeta or vacuo or metastable vacuo uh, is a positive cosmological constant. And uh, what we want to assume basically that the um, distance conjecture, which we have nice evidence for it in case of anti zeta vacuo, holds also now for uh, the Dizita case. So the, the ADC is still valid, and uh, therefore we call it the cosmological constant distance conjecture. And it uh, says simply that in the limit of a small, now positive cosmological constant, there's a light tower of states with some particular M. So let me just recall the relation which I've uh, written down uh, before. So uh, the tower mass scales with some parameter lamb with some lambda uh, to some parameter alpha. And uh, one also in general can introduce another proportionality constant, which is uh, called uh, lambda or inverse lambda here. So if you put things together, you have this relation. And there are also the arguments the, from the Higuchi bound or from the form of uh, potentials that the parameter alpha should uh, be bounded, uh, should be lower bounded by one over four, and the upper bound should be uh, should be one half. So this would be the uh, allowed range of alpha, I think, for four dimensional effective field series. Now, the dark universe, which I said was uh, proposed in this nice paper, is saying that, uh, uh, or is postulating that uh, there is indeed a tower of very light states related to the smallness of the cosmological constant following precisely this relation. So the tower of states are given by the KK modes of n large so-called dark dimensions. So if you just, just to summarize, we are dealing with three parameters, the number of uh, extra dimensions, the scaling parameter alpha, and these other parameter little lambda, which we have introduced and without going into the details, um, the experimental bounds on Newton law are telling us that alpha has to be uh, one over four. So just uh, precisely saturating the lower bound. Uh, then from the arguments from Newton start rehating that there can be at least here in this scenario, only one extra dimension. So uh, basically we are dealing with a five dimensional uh, universe plus some extra small uh, uh, dimensions uh, in string theory in M theory. And also there's a nice argument by Uncle Doki that uh, if you look at the cosmic ray spectrum, uh, the parameter lambda should be of order uh, 10 to minus three. That's basically to get the right mass of the KK particles uh, uh, in order to satisfy these bounds. So again, I, I put these together. We have a radius of a dark dimension, which is of this order. and if you now use uh, the correct numbers, you get that the radius of the dark dimension is uh, very large, it's of order of uh, one micrometer, uh, using the experimental in input of the cosmological constant, which uh, is uh, 2.3 MeV. 
quarter of it. And now you can also easily compute the related uh, species scale, the cutoff scale uh, for the effective feed theory, which is is uh, 10 to 10 GB, and you see, uh, indeed, there's a big discrepancy between the milli volt mass scale in the infrared and the UV cutoff scale, uh, which is about 10 to 10 GB, which I think, indeed, shows the importance of the species scale, in particular, in this scenario. Of course, you might ask the question, what is, can we, is there any concrete implementation of the dark universe? in some uh, microscopic string compactifications. There are some remarks in this paper by uh, Miguel et al. in F-theory. One can also ask, uh, can this implement it in some KKLT-like model with an uplift? And there's also an interesting paper on that. So it's about the dark dimension of Obstrop by Ralph Blumhagen, Max Brinkmann, and uh, Andriana Macrido. And they argue that in, indeed, in this case, if you do the uplift by an antibrain, you precisely get this uh, uh, parameter alpha, which determines the exponent uh, to be one over four. Okay, so um, now I want to uh, switch a little gears and come to uh, the question of uh, black holes, uh, in particular primordial black holes uh, in the dark universe. So this is a paper which we wrote uh, with uh, Anko Doki and Antoniades in, uh, in June. And uh, as I have said already before, uh, black holes or primordial black holes were considered in the past in many, uh, many instances, in many, in many publications by many authors as being dark uh, meta candidates. And um, all these, or many of these uh, uh, analyses were, which were done in the past are nicely summarized in these pictures because there are very strong constraints on uh, the possibility of having uh, black holes as dark matter candidates. The black hole one is considering are basically those in the mass range between 10 to 15 and uh, 10 to 36 gram. And uh, um, what you see here on the y-axis is uh, the, the ratio of the part of the dark matter which can serve as a dark matter to explain the dark matter in the universe. So uh, here for ratio one, uh, uh, dark matter will, would be entirely be explained by black holes and here the only a smaller fraction of uh, black holes uh, can be dark matter candidates. So this is an exclusion plot. So you see certain regions are excluded by microlensing and uh, other uh, arguments. And um, even more important for us, uh, black holes uh, radiate. They uh, radiate by Hawking radiation. And uh, therefore, they, for example, they could uh, decay too quickly, uh, have lifetimes shorter than the uh, universe lifetime or you could have seen the decay signals, but they also bounce here. And basically it turns out that there's only a small window for which black holes could serve as dark matter candidates between say 10 to 17 uh, and 10 to 21 or 22 uh, gram. Uh, but uh, moreover, uh, I believe uh, that uh, there are further model dependent bounds, which were also discussed in the literature, that these, even this window uh, is closed and uh, that it is very hard to explain uh, dark matter entirely by uh, primordial black holes. And uh, basically what I want to discuss now, if uh, this uh, picture can be so to say improved or changed uh, by uh, black holes in the dark universe. So actually we have three possible regimes for black holes of a certain horizon, RS. Either RS is bigger than some typical size of some extra dimension, then we are dealing with a four dimensional black hole. Or the horizon is between the string lengths in some string models and the size of the extra dimension, then we are dealing uh, with some five dimensional black hole. Or the black hole, uh, Schwarzschild radius, the horizon size is smaller than the string scale. And then there's this nice black hole string correspondence, then the black hole uh, will become uh, a string state. Actually, as you will now discuss, uh, we, will, uh, we will be interested in the region number two, where black holes are still uh, in a way classical objects. They do not behave like strings, but they become five-dimensional. So as I will discuss, these 5D black holes are good now. And in particular, I like to emphasize all dark matter candidates. So how this can be, namely, I, I show you First, some uh, results that we have derived, and then I give you 
uh, some more explanations of it. Uh, what we have derived, and uh, I think this is in a way also interesting and compelling, for a black hole uh, of some mass of a 10 to 21 uh, gram. Um, and remember this uh, precisely those which are uh, relevant, which are in this window, which I have shown you before. The Schwarzschild radius is about two micrometers. So it is uh, just of the order of the radius, which was derived from the cosmological constant being relevant for the dark universe. So those black holes uh, have precisely Schwarzschild radius of this size. And uh, it means that black holes in this window are in fact not four dimensional, but they are five dimensional. And therefore, one has to redo the analysis. We have to treat them not as four dimensional objects, but one has to treat them as five dimensional objects. Uh, so that is the first observation. It's a conspiracy of numbers. Then uh, as we will also argue, the window gets enlarged to smaller masses. Uh, namely, we can even uh, make the window broader. So we can go even up to 10 to 14 gram, and uh, even if the window gets clo closed, which I think is very likely for 4D black holes, the 5D primordial black holes are still viable all dark matter candidates. The basic reason is that the five dimensional black holes have a longer lifetime compared to the four dimensional uh, relatives uh, due to the dark dimension. So uh, let me briefly discuss uh, uh, how such a black hole uh, is formed and then also how it will decay. I will mostly focus on the decay process, uh, but in general, the change of mass of a black hole is given by some accretion term. So there's a hot plasma and the black hole will attract the uh, uh, particles. So it will grow in mass, but uh, on the other hand, it will also evaporate mostly due to Hawking radiation. And there are these two competing terms in the evolution, in the time of evolution of a black hole. So uh, one can compute the accretion uh, production rate, uh, which I do not discuss anymore. It's given by this uh, uh, kind of relation. N is again the number of extra dimensions. Um, and uh, here you see the Schwarzschild radius. And uh, in fact, epsilon is the energy density of a hot, plus, hot, hot plasma around the horizon. And I think one can then argue, also we haven't looked at this in, in more detail, uh, that these primordial black holes, like their four dimensional relatives, will be produced after it appeared, after inflation, but before the reheating uh, temperature. Uh, but now let us uh, discuss the Hawking radiation, which is more relevant for the argument of the talk. Uh, namely, we want to simply compute the black hole decay rate uh, in a uh, five plus n dimensional uh, gravity theory. We have the Hawking temperature, uh, which is simply n plus one over four pi times the Schwarzschild radius. Excuse me. And uh, also the entropy in a uh, four plus n dimensional uh, gravity theory is given by the black hole mass times the Schwarzschild radius divided by n plus two. Okay, then you can uh, go on. Uh, next, uh, in this formula, the Schwarzschild radius appears. So we have to determine the Schwarzschild radius uh, in a four plus n dimensional uh, Einstein theory. It is simply given by one over the uh, now higher dimensional uh, Planck mass, which is the species scale, which I have shown you before, times some uh, additional factor. From that, you can compute the number of emitted particles uh, of some certain energy. And finally, I do not go into the details. Uh, you can also uh, compute the decrease in mass by well, this formula. I think what is, for, for example, in particular important is that the Schwarzschild radius, uh, if in particular, if you lower the, um, the Planck mass compared to the 10 to 19 GeV in four dimensions to a, uh, to a lower value, you see that basically the horizon size also gets, uh, gets, uh, gets larger accordingly. So what are the results? I always like now to compare a four dimensional black hole in the case uh, where n, little n is zero uh, with a five dimensional case. So for a four dimensional black hole, the Hawking temperature is roughly uh, the inverse black hole mass over 10 to 16 gram in uh, units of uh, MeV. 
this case gets changed now to five dimensions. So I only use the case, only show you the case of n little n equal one. Then we have uh, uh, the inverse square root of uh, the uh, black hole mass divided by 10 to 12 gram again in, in MeV. Um, similarly, for the lifetime, the lifetime of water manager black hole uh, is um, roughly a black hole in, in gram cube times this uh, number, small number 10 to minus uh, 35. And for example, if you compute it for a black hole of mass 10 to 14 gram, it has a lifetime comparable to the age uh, of the universe. So smaller or lighter black holes would decay actually uh, too fast. They would not be any more present uh, nowadays. Uh, for five dimensional black holes, it looks like this. Uh, it's a black hole uh, in gram square, but now here the prefactor is much smaller. It's only 10 to minus 15. So they are much uh, longer lived. And now uh, if you compare this, a black hole of 10 to 11 gram now has uh, uh, an age comparable, uh, has a lifetime comparable to the age of the universe. So in conclusion, if you, if you look at all these uh, uh, well results, which can be actually rather obtained rather uh, simply, uh, you see that the five dimensional primordial black holes are first of all bigger, second of all colder, and third longer lived than their four dimensional uh, relatives. And this is of course very, very important. Namely, now you can do the plot. You can do redo the redo the plot. Basically, here on the on the right hand side, the constraints of microlensing, and so they do not change. So again, you get the upper limit for the black hole mass, 10 to 21 or 10 to 10 to 22 gram. But uh, actually, on the lower side, the constraints from evaporation and so have completely uh, disappeared. And if you also look into other modeled model dependent uh, constraints, I think they also disappear. So as I said before, the window gets uh, increased, particularly here at the lower mass side. And these, uh, for them, these five dimensional black holes would be indeed good uh, candidates for all dark matter, for 100% dark matter. Of course, I think many details have to be still worked out, in particular also what their production concerns. But I think this is, uh, at least I find it, uh, a cure is an interesting result. So let me summarize. Hopefully you can read this. Um, in, the, in the dark universe, there's a nice conspiracy of number and uh, it leads uh, that, uh, to the observation that primordial black hole are potential all dark matter candidates. Because 5D black holes in the dark universe emit less particles than the four-dimensional black holes. So in particular, the limits uh, from the photon Hawking radiation uh, can be relaxed. So comparing our calculations with the limits of the 40 cases, uh, as I just said, the limit, uh, the window gets increased, uh, basically up to down to 10 to 14 gram. And uh, in, this, uh, in this window, there should be good uh, dark matter uh, candidates. Uh, if, we, if we decrease, if we even go to lower masses, uh, it, they again, it turns out that uh, the older, that the black holes are excluded since they decay uh, too fast into photons. And uh, this would not be observed in uh, cosmic ray. However, with some uh, particular uh, exception, which is of course still a speculation, there is this uh, signal by some, uh, by some satellites, the integral satellite who claim to observe a cosmic ray signal uh, at 511 uh, keV, a gamma ray signal. And again, this is an, again a nice conspiracy of number. If you take a black hole in this mass range, a little bit lower, 10 to 12 gram, uh, its Hawking radiation is about one MeV. So in principle, this could, uh, this could uh, explain this, uh, this event. Of course, uh, there are other constraints and uh, one would not say that all dark matter uh, will be explained by such a light uh, primordial black hole. I also like to mention at the very end that uh, one week ago or so, there was another very interesting uh, paper about dark matter in the dark universe. Uh, namely, it looks like a, a alternative uh, proposal. Namely, uh, 
eh, Gonzalo, Miguel Montero, Oviet and Wafa uh, look at the possibility that the uh, tower itself, we have seen the, the tower before, the tower of KK gravitons uh, itself uh, could serve as a viable dark matter candidate. So uh, actually this would be nothing else than saying that the five dimensional gravitons uh, would uh, be uh, would uh, build up dark matter. Um, in their paper, it is uh, it is said that these black hole, excuse me, these dark matter, these KK gravitons are produced at a temperature around one GeV in order to fit data. And uh, if you express this in terms of the cosmological constant, it is, it is just lambda to the power one over six. So again, this can be nicely uh, explained by the cosmological constant. I don't know whether this is really an explanation or again, only a coincidence. And they would decay down to lighter gravitons of mass uh, between one and 100 kilo electron volts. So they decay down. So not uh, the, light, the heaviest uh, KK particles are the dark matter, but only the lowest one in the tower, which has this particular mass. And uh, again, uh, one can now ask the question, can you compare this with the black hole scenario I've discussed before? I think you made also this remark at the end of your paper, which I think is interesting. Uh, is there a relation between uh, the dark matter being black holes or gravitons? And uh, perhaps uh, this can be made more precise. Um, there are these uh, papers, uh, very nice papers by Giard, Vali, and Cesar Gomez, uh, who uh, view black holes as bound states of uh, gravitons. And uh, just as a speculation, maybe this would also help to uh, explain this complementarity between black holes and gravitons here as dark matter candidates. So I think that's it. I'd like to thank you. Okay, we have time for only limited amounts of questions or we end up in an infinite queue before lunch. So, okay, Miguel. Hey, thanks for the very nice talk, Dieter. So I wanted to ask about the, um, so, so the, the I think I think the connection between the the graviton the 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 model we have where the where the the K comes the the dark matter is K K gravitons and the relation to black holes is really the the, the the relation comes because these are just the formulae of of an object that decay gravitationally so there's just two scales in there is the Planck mass and the and the mass of the object so they kind of have to agree but one thing that we that that we that we like about the about the gravitons is that it's easier to so the way we produce them we just have the hot brain and let it radiate into the bulk whereas i'm not so sure how you produce the in in the, the black holes that would give you primordial dark matter so i wanted to ask if you have in mind any mechanism of production for the primordial black holes that they would be the dark matter yes indeed i think this would be more like the convention scenario we have an uh, epoch uh, of uh, inflation. This might still happen in the uh, in the five dimensional universe. It, it cools down. There's reheating, and uh, therefore we have a hot plasma. And as people before have considered, this hot, hot plasma, uh, there's gravitational accretion uh, in the hot plasma, and uh, black holes are formed in this epoch. Of course, the question is, can the number density of those black holes explain dark matter? Um, I, I think uh, people were positive about this before. I, Cannot add much more, but I think it should be in a, in a way redone or recalculated also for the 50 case, which we haven't done yet. Thanks.